Hi, welcome to Relish Books. Today I'm talking about the great classic, To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, it's one that I love and I'm just going to be talking about it for a little bit today. I know it's already been talked about so many times, but um, great classics can always be talked about more. I'm going to talk about it a little bit, why I love it, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about why there's some controversy about the book. But it was published in 1960, even though it's set before that, more in, I think, the time period that Harper Lee was growing up, more of the 20s, um, in a small town in Alabama, I believe. Um, and while the book is famous for the trial of um, Tom Robinson, a um, man who has been... Um, falsely accused of rape um, and about um, just all the um, unrest and the um, prejudice and unfairness of the trial in a lot of ways because um, it's a lot of um, yeah different um, different race tensions um, in the South and while that's what the book is known for, it's set just from the perspective of this um, young girl and her brother and friend and just their summer kind of growing up together. Um, and while that's the setting, like their summer, you know, Scout and Jem and Dill are just getting into trouble and just going about their daily lives. Scout has, you know, her troubles and her fights in school. There's all this. But that's really just this setting. Um, and even the trial, while it's very important, is not the focus of the book. I believe the real focus and the real pivotal thing um, is the father, Atticus Finch. And he is the reason that I love this book. I think he is the reason that anyone who's read this book loves it. I think he's the reason that it's a classic, although I do think it um, has a lot of importance and significance in the civil rights movement, but um, I wouldn't like the book if it wasn't for him because I don't like Scout very much, and that's um, a problem since she's the main character. She is annoying, her innocence and um, her like childish ignorance feels forced at times, feels put on. That might be partly because she is um older it's like she's writing the book from a time that she's older and she's looking back on some of these things from a perspective of understanding more what was going on but um even her speech at times it's a very um almost like you could almost call it like a dialect um a lot of slang um and it feels forced um not that i'm saying that people didn't really talk that way but it just she doesn't ring very true to me um, but Atticus makes up for that. He's such a tremendous character. So much subtlety and depth to him because he's so quiet and he doesn't really show a lot of outward affection. Um, he's just a really, really good man. And that's really refreshing. Um, while I really enjoy a story that's, you know, a struggle of good and bad and people that have a lot of good and bad in them, um, it's really refreshing to just have somebody that's good. And you kind of see that, um, and it's even referenced more specifically in the sequel, which I definitely don't recommend, but um, in Ghost at a Watchman, it's kind of as a reference to Atticus Finch kind of being the conscience of this town. And they look to him um, to do what's right, even if they don't really realize that. Um, yeah, such a tremendous character and not at all pretentious. Not at all, oh, you know, he doesn't set himself up like the good guy in any way. He's just um, a quiet um, man that a lot of people don't really notice. Like even Scout doesn't really, you know, she takes him for granted. She doesn't realize a lot of his worth um and yeah such a great character um i like dill pretty well her friend he's fun 
um, and her older brother Jem I like also. He feels pretty real to me. He kind of reminds me of my brothers in some ways growing up. Um, and I like most of the other cast of characters. It's really just Scout that I don't like and I can forgive that because the rest of the book is so good. Like I said before, um, it's important for every element of a book to be good, but if all the elements are good except for one, and if they're really good, a book can usually get away with that. It can have one missing element and still be really good. Um, and there are times when um, Scout is fine. Obviously, you're seeing this whole story from her perspective um, and the way that she sees um, her father and the way that she grows up a little bit throughout the book is good. Um, so as far as why it's controversial, um, this book is considered, if you look it up, is considered a banned book. But something to remember about that is when a book is called a banned book, usually means it's been banned in some school somewhere. Not necessarily even all schools. A lot of the time, sometimes it's only just one. Like, I know that one school in California banned this book, and there's probably a lot more that have, um, but it's, it doesn't mean it's, like, everywhere. It doesn't mean that it's banned in regular libraries. It's definitely not. Um, there are some books nowadays that are very hard to, like, get on the internet, unfortunately, and this is not one of them. Um, and the controversy comes about for several reasons. And while I never agree with the idea of banning a book, I think that's very wrong. Um, there needs to be freedom of expression, even if it's stuff we don't agree with. But um, there is such a thing as age appropriate. And if, um, as is the case, at least in one of these schools, if parents are asking for the book to be removed um, because of certain things, that's understandable and I think it should always be the parents um, it should be up to the parents to decide what their children are reading um, so I kind of I kind of get that and I don't mind that um, if it's being taken out of certain schools by the parents request um, I do think some of the uh, some of the reasons for it are um, kind of a misconceptions um, because if the problem that they have with it is that it deals with um, rape and that there's some strong language. I totally understand not wanting, you know, small children to read that. I would not recommend it for young children. I think when it is in schools, when it's given to um, kids to read, it's usually high school age, which I think is totally appropriate. But um, no, I would not give this to a young, a young child because there is um, some adult themes for sure that's dealing with some pretty dark things and there's quite a lot of language um but as far as some people have complained about um it being racially inappropriate for um, people to read and it is in some ways but you have to remember that that is how the culture was and we can't change the past we can only learn from it and to try to say that we shouldn't read these books because they contain wrong things that people thought is to try to deny what has happened and it takes away our ability to learn from it so i think it's very you have to be very very careful um in that thinking um and the book does it does use some pretty, like I said, it's a pretty harsh language. It uses the N-word, but it's set, part of its purpose was part of the civil rights movement. And when it's doing those things, it's doing it for a very um, definite reason. Um, sometimes when that language is used, like Scout uses that language because it's what she's heard people around her doing and her father rebukes her. He is this man who is ahead of his time in a lot of ways and um, is kind of leading this change and he's standing for um, 
you know, justice and equality. And I just think that it's important to read um, historically. And it's not, it's not done in a way to put anybody down. It was written to help. Um, and so to call it inappropriate because of race seems very ironic to me because it was actually written to further the cause of civil rights. So I just think that that's kind of a, kind of a, um, a paradox almost like that is a large purpose of this book and that it's now being banned for. Um, so I just think if you have a problem with the book um, and you haven't read it, definitely read it before making um, a judgment on it and um, just think about whether what purpose it has served and that it has been far more helpful than hurtful in our history. And again, Atticus Finch, such a great character. Everybody should read the book just for him. Um, and um, I like the movie in that it um, was very close to the book. This was surprisingly close to the book. So much so that it actually felt like a book. That's my problem with it, is that it was so slow paced. It kind of felt like while you're watching it, it kind of felt like you were sitting there reading a book. It really felt like it went on forever. But um, I think Gregory Peck was an excellent choice for Atticus. I just wish it had been a little more compacted. Um, but it is a, a pretty good movie if you um, prefer movies to books. But um, anyway, that's my opinion about To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, yeah, I know that it's controversial, but again, probably for people who read it, I don't think it's really as controversial as you might think. I think, I really do think that most people who read it really love it, and that is why it's still a classic and I think it always will be. So thanks.